Hi, welcome back. Um, today we've, we're outside and we're just having a look at this Turbo R. This is a Turbo R from 92. Um, it's our car. We do um, a lot of stuff on this car, a lot of products on here. Um, what I thought we'd do today is just show you around the engine bay, just uh, your usual stuff, things to check. So, on this side, you've got most obviously the hydraulic reservoirs. Two hydraulic reservoirs. This is for your um, mineral oil, uh, LHM Plus. Uh, it's very important that the right fluid goes in, hence the big warning labels on top. They also have this uh, funny little uh, adapter for the bottles. So the only way to fill it is with the right bottle. But what people tend to do is use one of the original bottles and decant other um, fluids into the bottle so that they can fit it. But you have to be very careful. So just make sure that the right fluid is being used. Um, but yeah, so when you get the, the proper stuff and the spout, you insert the end of the nozzle in there and twist it in and it locks in. And what you do is you then turn the bottle upside down and squeeze it in until there's a little green float that will rise up to the top of this uh, sight glass here when it's at the right level. Um, so when you see, th that one is obviously a bit low, that needs a top up. This one here, you can see that there's actually a green float in the, uh, in the viewing point there. Um, so that one doesn't need topping up. So um, the next thing to look at probably is the engine oil. So that's obviously this dipstick that says engine on it here. You want to pull that out, always clean it first of all, make sure that the engine's had time to settle because obviously once the oil's being pumped around the engine, uh, it will take a little while just to settle back in the sump to get you a proper accurate reading. So once you take it out, you want to clean the dipstick properly, put it back in, push it all the way down, put it out, and then you check your level there. As you can see, this is just in between the min and the max, so it's not a bad level, could probably do with a little top up. Um, but that's fine. On this side you've also got the power steering fluid. Again, like a mini dipstick on the on the screw top there. Take it out, clean it, put it back in, screw it down. See where it's at? Again, power steering level needs a top up. You see that's the minimum line there and it's not even touching the dipstick, so, uh, touching the stick at all, so that needs a top up. This car's probably due a service. You also on this side you've got the coolant. This obviously you don't want to open this when it's hot because that, that could be pressurised. And that when they're new you'll come to see through them a bit better. But when they're a bit old it goes a bit opaque and it's a bit hard to see. But you usually just give it a shake and you can see where the fluid's settling on there. It's a bit hard to see probably from the camera. But if we move that hose out of the way you might. You give it a wiggle and see the uh, fluid line there sloshing around. That's fine. And um Make sure the cap goes back on properly. Washer fluid, there isn't an indicator for that, so just always top it up. Um, so that's pretty much that for this side. So we'll move around to the other side now. So on this side, uh, the only thing you've really got to check is the gearbox oil. Some cars, earlier cars, I think you probably have to take this cover off the, um, the, the wiper motor, but on this you can actually get to the gearbox dipstick without doing that. For the gearbox oil, you actually need to do that with the engine running. So I'm just going to start the engine now. So I'm not sure how well you're going to hear me, but I'm going to take the dipstick out now. Same principle, clean it off. Re-dip it all the way down, and then you can get a level. So one thing, I'll, I don't know how well I could be heard while the engine was running, but I'll just show you, when you do take the dipstick out, 
it's important that you don't then hold the dipstick upside down because you're just going to let the oil run down and it's going to not be clear where the oil level is. So when you take the dipstick out, always keep it that way round and then you should see a distinct line where it's been sat in the oil. Um, also, if you do have to ever start a car leaning through the window or not sitting in the driver's seat, just be very careful about knocking the gear selector on the column because it is very easy to just knock that gear selector into reverse or drive and the car will take off and you won't be in it to stop it. So uh, just, just be very careful with that. The other thing we're going to do while we're on this side is just show you how to change the air filter if you if you needed to do that. It's pretty simple. I mean, you know, depending on where you are in the world, air filters can get blocked up and uh, obviously they're changed on services. But uh, if you were doing your own oil change, um, we're not going to do that now, but it is relatively straightforward. The sump plug is just a, 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 like a big Allen key. Um, I think they actually have them in the toolkit. Um, but it does take about eight and a half litres of engine oil. So if you were to drain the engine oil, make sure you've got a container big enough to take all the oil. And then the oil filter on these is just a spin on oil filter, which should be able to be done by hand. Um, but we're not gonna do that today because that uh, requires going underneath the car. So I'm gonna grab The air filter on these is pretty straightforward. This is one of the rectangular filters. It's just a matter of taking this top off here. You've got a few clips or tabs. And then this will just come straight off and that exposes your air filter. Now, as you can see, that's a bit dirty. To be honest, it's not too bad, but we'll put a new one in just for the sake of it. Nice fresh air filter going in. You want to clear out any of the stuff that's in this air filter box. Make sure it's all clear. Make sure that the that bead seats all properly make sure everything's clear in the top then it can just go back on obviously you've got to make sure that hose goes in properly carefully not to tear it And then clip it back on. If you get a tight clip, clip the rest of them on first and then you can make it easier to do the rest. And then tighten up your clip. Ooh. that and that's your filter changed um, the other thing that you want to just uh, do is just check that your um, you, know, you can put bits of grease here and there on, on places that uh, that are, are wear um, strikers you can put a bit of grease on your bonnet strikers maybe on your hinges um, just yeah I mean to be honest this engine bay could do with a bit of a tidy up it's a bit on the messy side but it's um this car is used um but yeah that's about all for now so if there is anything else you want to see that you think you might be able to tackle or you think we can show you then please feel free to comment